All right, man, we back. Marcy Sports Talk. You know, it took me a minute to do this video, man. Um, just the game was so many highs and lows, man, today. But uh, shout out to the Lions. They got the victory 27-24. Um, and let's go through the stat line real quick. Um, as we usually do, Stafford. Let's start off with the home team. Um, Wentz was 20, uh, 259 yards through the air, 19 for 36. Two touchdowns. Sanders had 13 carries, 53 yards. Jordan Howard only had 11 carries, 37 yards, one TD. Um, Sproles didn't do much. The Highlands receiver, he had 62 yards, four catches. Aguilar had two touchdowns, 50 yards. Um, and then other than that, that was it for the Lions. Stafford only had 201 yards, 18 for 32, one touchdown. Uh, J.D. McKissick had that that uh, that flea flicker reverse, or that reverse, uh, double reverse uh Carry one one carry forty four yards. Carry on had twenty carries thirty six yards one TD. I'll talk about that. Ty Johnson had four carries for five yards. Uh, Amendola had a big catch. He had four catches thirty seven yards. Gallon had 17, 17 yards on two catches eight targets. And um, Hoxton only had one catch uh, four four targets one yard. And um, other than that. Uh, Marvin Jones had a big day. Nine, nine, kick, nine targets, six receptions, 11, 101 yards. So it was an interesting game. Obviously, they came down the field. Darius Slay, he blew coverage. He was in zone responsibility. He was in deep zone responsibility. Um, he, he peeled off the zone to, to guard. Maybe it was an option round, like the speed out or or, or uh, just a, just a uh, short curl or whatever. And he, he he came off deep responsibility, and then I think it was a running back was a Sanders or, uh, that that went down the sideline, and he gave up deep responsibility. Whoever it was caught it. it. We our defense held, put him in position to kick a field goal. Um, you know, then Jamal Agnew runs a touchdown, touchdown back, and I think I, they scored another touchdown um, as well in the first quarter. But then we just weathered the storm. Offense was steady. Made a lot of big plays. Our receivers uh, did well today, especially Marvin Jones. He had the high hand. They had no answer for him. Galladay had some 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 uh, boneheaded errors. He did the comeback route deep late in the game on a critical third down, and he he ran out of bounds. Stafford threw a good ball. Um, he messed that up. Amendola had a big catch down the down the um, down the stretch. But um, just looking defensively, um, you know, Jared Davis came back today, and I noticed. You know what I'm saying? Um, he was blowing coverage. You know, at the end of the day, that's something he still ain't improved on. You know, once again, um, across the middle, one that catches to Zach Ertz, he peeled off and tried to uh, play the short route, and they went to Zach Ertz across the middle. And um, he messed that responsibility up a couple of times. But then again, no telling to lie or whoever else would have messed that responsibility up too because Zach Ertz is the only real tight end they, they played so far. Last week, Hunter Henry was out. They didn't do much with Vir Virgil Green. The year we before that, the Cardinals run that air raid, so they really don't utilize the tight end like that. Charles Clay only got one catch that game, but they held Zach Ertz in check, man. And that that's usually a situation where it may be Alshon and Deshaun Alshon and, uh, uh, Jeffries and Deshaun Jackson played. Maybe Zach Ertz would have been more effective, but they had to brag on him. They took him away. He still got his catches, but they kept him out the end zone. And um, you know, Zach Ertz is is, is an animal. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, he still got his catches today, but he didn't really kill us like, you know, he would have killed us a year or two ago when we had problems guarding the tight end. So, other than defensively, the defensive backs played well. Tracy Walker played well. We had a few uh, lapses in coverage and zone. Those will get better if we move on. But my concern is now growing a little bit more steeper for the defensive line. Uh, they stopped the run pretty good today. They made the adjustments. The Eagles was running east and west. They was killing it at first. The Lions shut that down. And the Eagles made one critical coaching, one big critical coaching error, which I'll address in a minute. But the D-line, they're going to have to get Deshaun Hand back because they need that guy. They can, they can rush from the inside. And, you know, Trey Flowers, you know, at the end of the day, he's starting to get some some some, some pressure off the edge. Devin Kennard gets some pressure off the edge a little bit. But they need that, that inside defensive tackle. Mike Daniels got hurt today. I don't know the extent of his injury, but – Mike Daniels ain't no Deshaun Hand at this point in his career until he get fully healthy. So they need Deshaun Hand to play that three technique and a little bit of that hand position to really create that pressure. When Deshaun Hand come back healthy, then Mike Daniels come back healthy, I think they can uh, they get more pressure. But it's still becoming a growing concern. But late in the ball game, you start to see 
that Detroit Lions D-line that started in the middle of the ball game late. They started to get that pressure. And Trey Flowers is hanging on uh, Carson Wentz at the end of the game, too. So they starting to get that pressure. So I'm, I'm starting to see them come alive. But it is a little bit of concern. But when Patricia start blitzing a lot and zero blitzing, then that's when I get concerned. But I think when they get hand back, Daniels come back healthy, I think they'll, they'll be able to get more pressure uh, inside and outside. So, um, But the one error that I did notice Philadelphia made was the fact that they kept riding with Miles Sanders. He fumbled the ball. Um, and, you know, uh, Jordan Howard ran the ball well. And historically, he's, he's run the ball well versus us in, uh, with Chicago. And, you know, they just went away from him. They went with Miles Sanders, you know, when they should have been running it down the gut with Jordan Howard. And Jordan Howard had a lot of success. He looked tough to tackle. And despite Miles, Miles Sanders fumbling the ball, Philadelphia still rolled with uh, Miles Sanders over Jordan Howard, and Jordan Howard looked to be a load, and they didn't utilize him enough. Man, only 11 carries, which he should have got the majority of the carries the way he was looking. But you know it is what it is. That's up to Doug Peterson. Um, he didn't make the adjustment. And like I said before in my fantasy videos, Jordan Howard is a running back that go north and south, and we need we need more of those type of guys in the NFL today because the Zeke Elliotts and the and the Jordan Howards, they kind of become extinct. Even though Saquon and Kamara can do a little bit of those things, they're looking for those scat backs to get out to be a receiver, get to the flag, or, you know, run an option routes and stuff of that nature. But um, it, it just looked like Carson Wentz couldn't really miss a lot of completions, but he pretty much did. He didn't really tear us up that bad, man. And, you know, this is a bend-don't-break defense. It ain't the point where, you know, you know, you know, it's just, you know, bend, don't break, stop them on third down, stop the run. And I'm kind of seeing the defensive line kind of, they trying, they kind of, kind of letting it starting to come together. And uh, now we're getting guys healthy. Deshaun Hand to be the final piece to get healthy. But um, other than that, you know, defensively, it was straight. Tracy Walker looking like a star out there, man. He ain't going to be perfect, but he looking good out there today. And hopefully Darius Slade healthy. Hopefully Miles Daniels be there healthy. But um, Rashad Melvin played well today. For the most part, but one guy that did hurt us, Aguilar, he did hurt us and he helped us with fumbles and, and other things. But the refs tried to take the game from us at the end, and uh, with the, the Trey Flowers and the, and the, the Eagles lineman pushed him into Carson Wentz, they shouldn't have been a call. There was a couple more calls in there that was questionable as well. The uh, the defenseless receiver in the flat that wasn't that shouldn't have been called. But at the end of the day, even on the last play of Carson Wentz, go back and watch it. I just watched it on the screen. Whoever was rushing off the edge, I think it was Trey Flowers, he got held. The offensive lineman held his arm. And that should, and the referee didn't call that. But, hey, it is what it is. They're going to miss some calls. They're going to call some calls. But Matthew Stafford today, um, he did enough to win. He wasn't on this A game. And you know what? I, I would prefer them um, put, you know, Terrell Crosby. And even though Taylor Decker, he wasn't terrible today, but I just prefer, I, it just seemed like we ran the ball better with him in there. But, um you know, Stafford got to make some some critical plays. The one where he rolling out to his right when there wasn't no pressure there, throwing across his body, throwing in the dirt against Marvin Jones. He got to step into that throw. But at the end of the day, when you don't know if pressure coming or not, shit, I don't blame him. Get the fuck out the way. And you don't want to turn the clock going off. So Chris Spielman said, well, Stafford got to make those plays. At the end of the day, he got to be able to trust his offensive line. And if Taylor Decker uh, has got my blind side, I don't, I don't trust him neither. <laughs> to keep it real, I don't trust him. <laughs> You know, so Stafford, he knew he was going against a good defensive front today, and he had to roll out to his right and throw across his body, but he did have room. But how would you know? You don't know if pressure coming or not. And they did a good job keeping him clean today, but he got he to gotta have more faith in his offensive line. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to have faith in your offensive line when you get knocked around. But, you know, the offense, other than that, Hawkinson, he going through some rookie roles right now. Um, Chargers, really good team defending the tight end. The Eagles are a really good team defending the tight end. So he's getting some different looks um, in there. And he, you know, he could have caught some balls and they prided it away. He gonna have, he gonna learn how to utilize his body and utilize how to his length, how to catch the ball. So I'm really not concerned about him. But Marvin Jones had a good day today. Um Danny Amadola made some good plays, but <clears throat> my number one concern, and this was a top rush defense, is running the ball. I like the way that Daryl Bevel continued to run the ball even when it wasn't there. You know what I'm saying? But now we got to find some success. And once again, he's going to have to start utilizing Ty Johnson and carry on in the receiving game, you know, coming out the backfield on some of those theoretic angle routes and option routes and out routes and 
he needs to start looking at what they're doing in New Orleans with Alvin Kamara because Kerryon Johnson can do those things that Alvin Kamara can do. You know what I'm saying? But the run game just going to basically come down to revamping your offensive line. Rick Wagner can walk this year. Taylor Decker can walk this year. Um, Graham Glasgow can walk this year. The whole offensive line is is, is, is is expendable this year. So they gotta find an offensive line that can run block. They gotta find a left tackle that can that can protect the backside. They gotta find a right tackle that can pass protect and, and run block really well. Until the end, they gotta they gotta find a way to a screen game, a receiving game. And I would like for Daryl Bevel to look at what they're doing with Alvin Kamara in New Orleans and really take a peg out of their book and do that with carry on and Ty Johnson to kind of substitute for the lack of passing game that we do have, you know what I'm saying, the lack of running game that we is getting right now. But they're a really good team versus the, versus the uh, run. And um, I admire that Daryl Bevel stuck with it as long as he did. Jim Bob Quarter just would have went past happy, you know. So he did a pretty good job today. But the special teams, hey, man, we need to get a new special team coach, man. Mark, Mike, Malcolm, Jack, Malcolm Jenkins able to – they gave up the inside and him blocked the pun, and I thought they was running back for a touchdown. Um but it had to come back to the point that if they didn't score, if they didn't score a touchdown, I had to come back to where the punt was, was uh, where the kick was blocked at. I didn't, I wasn't aware of that rule for some reason. Um, but other than that, special teams got to do better. It's another week, another lapse. Predator missed a couple kicks last week. The week before that, uh, 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 Agnew fumbled the ball, and now we got the black the block punch. So they got to do better defending. They got to do better uh, discipline uh, with uh, with special teams. But other than that, man, I'm happy with the victory. Stafford led the truth today, man. And you know what? I'm not knocking him because he got to be able to trust his line. And um, um, and when he's able to trust that line, I think he'll be able to sit in the pocket and, and not kind of get happy feet. But, hey, good win for the Lions, 27-24 over Eagles. Moving on to Patrick, my homeboy. That's my boy right there. Uh, obviously, I'm going to ride the Lions next week, my fandom. It's a tough game. He went off again today uh, in Baltimore. But, um, hey, man, it's a tough game, man. We should be 3-0 with 2-0-1, but I take the undefeated. Green Bay won again versus uh, Denver. Didn't really blow Denver out uh, as I thought they would. But, hey, we'll see them after the bye week, after next week. Um, and, um, yeah, man, we ready to rock and roll, man. One pride, one time for the one time. We gone.